when you are doing high energetic spiritual work and you let's say you're tapping into a frequency that brings down incredible states of bliss right we have to remember that these energies are also burning hormonal fuels right so if you are running intense gratitude okay and i know this from when i was very weak is when i tuned into this as i tuned in some really great stuff and i ran it for an hour and then i was absolutely wiped for like four days and those hormones uh and whatever else goes in because you know i don't know everything about doctory stuff <laughs> right um but that stuff has to replenish um just like or not if you do ecstasy <laughs> Um, you have this amazing high, but I don't know that because I've never done ecstasy. You have this, which I actually haven't. <laughs> um, you have this amazing high, and then it's a known phenomenon that after the first trip or two, when you do ecstasy, you have a really hard come down for sometimes days, incredible depression. You burnt out all of this stuff, plus there's whatever goes on with oversaturation and receptors and all that kind of stuff. So... When you're doing high level energy work, you need to keep in mind that you have to replenish not only the substances that you're that might be involved from the body perspective in relation to these frequencies, but also when you have a lot of energy moving through the tissue, the actual nervous system has to adapt. The myelination process has to adapt. The phasia itself has to change and adapt to conduct that energy. So you've created this stimulus and like any stimulus, including like weight training, whatever, you have stimulus and recovery, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes you, like when I'm running through uh, that Kabbalistic exercise I mentioned earlier with the, the gamut of the alphabet there, like I'm often like tired after. I've tuned and retuned for, you know, an hour and a half or two hours to like, you know, over a hundred different frequencies. I've given myself up to change again and again and again and again. That takes a physiological toll. Now, I feel very free when I've done this. I wonder if people like this side of my face all the time. I, I feel very <laughs> free when I've done this and my capacity to give myself up to any frequency is drastically increased. But uh, the strength of the energy is quite diminished. So you need to recover. Um, so when you have these blissful states or you're running, say, a Kabbalistic formula that might be uh, give you or a letter that gives you a high state of happiness, a high state of bliss, um, some other type of like, insert, whatever it is, incredible gratitude, you, there is a recovery time. And when you recover from it, you're capable of more of it, of running more of it through you generating more of those substances that are being used as well right so this is applies to anything i have a friend who trained martial arts super intensely for decades like eight hours a day you know weights in his hands throwing punches spring blah blah like just hardcore and he was swimming in a sea of dopamine and serotonin mm -hmm. when he eventually burnt out um uh, this happened to me actually as well so i'll use me as the example when you burn out it's like oh my god where's that sea of serotonin and dopamine i was swimming in because the activity was also bringing was inducing that right so you get used to um having all that in your system uh, through the recovery process again you recover build recover build more recover build capacity for more and more and more and more and then if you can't engage in that activity, suddenly you're at a deficit for the stimulus for those hormones to release. So there's a lot of different sides to look at. Basically, look at when you run something, what happens after? And is it a recovery that needs to happen? How long is that recovery? If it's a week, that's a long time, right? Maybe truck back on you know, how intense you're doing that particular exercise. Maybe take uh, three weeks off. Look at what athletes do. Um, like high level athletes will uh, maybe take three weeks off of their activity or sport, you know, a couple of times a year and they'll do whatever they call it, like recovery, active recovery, whatever, um, during that time. 
So it might be if I'm feeling burnt out, like I just, the, the meditation suck and I can't tune into the energy strongly and I'm just depleted. Um, well, maybe I look into things that can help with the vitality because that's always going to be beneficial. Uh, but then still you have to recover from more vitality, right? When I buy stones and they, oh, so much more energy. I'm like, oh, like just buzzing with it. It might I might be exhausted for a couple of days after because I have to adapt to that much energy. Then I can run that energy through once I've adapted and have that energy in a more stable way. There's always an adaptation process. So if you look at your meditation like recovery, um, then or, or like, oh, it's my relaxation time or whatever, you won't you'll limit yourself from going through those experiences which require vast amounts of equanimity because in the absence of that equanimity, they are anything but relaxing yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. recuperate oriented. Mm -hmm. So it might be that to recover, you just walk in the woods for a couple of days or you, if walking's hard, go lie down under a tree, mm -hmm. you know, um, whatever works for you. Yeah. Cool stuff.